Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist at Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, Washington. A particular interest of mine in the clinic has been bronchioloalveolar carcinoma, or BAC. This is a unique subtype of lung cancer that has its own special appearance under the microscope and behavior in many patients. And it, it can be really quite challenging to manage. In, in practice, I tend to see a lot of patients who are quite over-treated for it, uh, receiving more therapy than they need and could actually be harmful compared with the natural history of the cancer itself. But at the same time, I might also see a few patients who are undertreated. So I wanted to cover in a, a few podcasts some on this particular subset of cancer. Now, first, a bit of background. Now, BAC is uh, based on the appearance under the microscope when a pathologist looks at it. Uh, the specific definition is that it does not invade the lung tissue. It's kind of... Uh, a little extra growth of the cancer cells just lining the top of the, uh, the membrane of the lung cells, uh, uh, the air spaces, but it doesn't invade into the structure of the lung and it should not be able to get into the bloodstream and travel outside of the lungs. And in fact, that's what we, we see as a distinguishing feature of this BAC syndrome compared with other adenocarcinomas, which is the main subtype of lung cancer, the, the most common one we see in the United States and increasingly around the world. So invasive adenocarcinoma uh, goes into the local tissues of the lung and often will travel to other parts of the body. BAC, in contrast, will tend to look on uh, scans like just little wispy, cloudy areas of haze on the, the scan, but not a solid mass. And then uh, you don't tend to see it spread to other parts of the body. It doesn't even invade to go into lymph nodes nearby. Instead, it tends to be limited to the lungs, and it just can appear as one patchy area or a handful of spots in the lungs. Now, in terms of the natural history, which means the behavior of the disease on its own, independent of treatment, BAC can be extremely variable. But on balance, on average, it tends to be a slower process than other forms of lung cancer. And because of that, it uh, can be helpful to treat it uh, uniquely and not just apply the exact same treatment approach that you would use for a faster growing, more threatening lung adenocarcinoma that invades the lung tissue. In fact, in a new classification that is being developed by several of the leading authorities in the field of lung cancer and pathology, there is a new name for what has historically been called BAC, and this is called adenocarcinoma in situ. Now that name actually means a precancerous lesion and it refers to the fact that patients who have just a single solitary lesion of what was called BAC, a non-invasive process, has an excellent uh, prognosis. This typically is associated with a 98, 99, or 100% uh, survival uh, five years after patients have had that uh, identified and treated, usually with surgery. Now, in parts of the world where we see a lot of BAC, and that's particularly in Asia, where they have a lot of experience with it, the common practice is to remove just the area of lung around the lesion, but not to do a larger surgery called a lobectomy that is typically done uh, for other cancers that are more threatening. In the U.S. still, we tend to do a larger surgery, and that really may uh, be more than is warranted and potentially detrimental to take out a huge amount of good, normal lung just for a very small uh, lesion that might be a centimeter or less, um, but has a very low probability of spreading to other locations. So. That's one issue where there is really a potential for over-treatment. Also, in patients who have uh, what we call multifocal BAC or multiple nodules of this process within the lungs, uh, the typical practice is to give a systemic or whole body therapy, whether that is chemotherapy 
or a targeted therapy like an epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor or ALK inhibitor. These are covered in some other discussions, but they're pill-based treatments that are specifically targeting a mutation that we might find in the cancer on biopsy. Anyway, the point is that you typically will give a whole body therapy, and in patients with a threatening lung cancer that has a survival that is often limited to months or a few years, we want to get started on that treatment right away. However, in patients with multifocal BAC, they can have a behavior of their cancer that could be spreading within weeks or months, but they could also have one that is extremely slow growing, that barely changes when we repeat a scan in six or nine or 12 months. And because of that, if the process is one where progression is extremely slow, may take years and years and years, and maybe lead to no problems or no threat to a patient's survival for five or 10 or more years, maybe never, it could be quite premature to give a treatment that has potential side effects and requires people to come in and out of the uh, oncology clinic on a regular basis for a process that is really a chronic issue, not that different from somebody finding out that they have high blood pressure or obesity or diabetes or one of the many things that we know can be a threat to your survival over years but isn't an imminent threat. And people tend not to overreact when you're told, well, you, you have uh, high blood pressure or high cholesterol and we should work on that because it's a problem over the next several years. Uh, that is just something to work on over a long time. Now, BAC, even when it is technically stage 4 multifocal in both lungs, can potentially be a very chronic process that is just something to manage, watch, treat as needed over many years. It isn't necessarily something that you need to rush in guns blazing and treat right away. And many of the leading experts in lung cancer recognize that if you see a pattern where someone has had a couple of scans prior to being diagnosed and they really show the cancer is moving extremely slowly, stand back, just watch things, and don't necessarily rush in and start treatment until you see clinically significant progression. And I say clinically significant as opposed to any progression, because if you squint and see a tiny change on a CAT scan of a millimeter or two in scans that were taken six months apart, that is technically a change, but in an asymptomatic patient, uh, if you only see this incredibly slow, tiny change over a long period of time, that isn't necessarily something that needs to be managed acutely with a treatment that uh, could have side effects. So we'll continue on this process, on this discussion of BAC, along with other areas of lung cancer and some other podcasts, but I hope that this is helpful for you. It's worth bearing in mind that some patients who technically have something that is called a cancer, uh, that treatment could be over-treatment, and some patients may really require nothing more than attentive follow-up and management only if you see a real change. Take care.